Open for a hinge and bracket special made for their 21st anniversary together and not heard in 21 years. From the Regent's Park Open Air Theatre in London, an hour with hinge and brackets is coming up at 7 o'clock. Enter the seventh dimension. BBC Radio 4 Extra. Uh, hello, Toby Haydock here. The Thinking Woman's oversight. Tonight, be careful what you agree to, even if it's the last thing someone ever asks of you. Our anthology series, All the Dark Corners, concludes as the summer ghosts shedding light on a different kind of haunting. It's the seventh dimension. Keeping me here's the best thing all round, really. <laughs> And now the third and final part of our anthology, All the Dark Corners. But if it's all the corners, shouldn't there be at least four of them? Otherwise it's a very oddly shaped room or, or thing. Or Actually, shouldn't it be all of the dark? Never mind, never mind. There's no joy coming up for our heroes when they grant an old lady's dying wish. Dad said the other day, if you can only free yourself from the fear of death, then you can really start to live. But is it death, or is it... For me, I think it's dying. No, it's not even that. It's, it's being in agonizing pain. That's it. That's why I never go horse riding, or skiing, or even walking near cliffs. The possibility of agonizing pain is everywhere. I don't even use escalators. Suppose I tripped and tumbled all the way to the bottom, the agony of it. I don't tell anyone. It's too stupid. Childish. I'm ashamed. But that's how I know I can't do it. Friends say it's the most terrible pain ever, and then they say, oh, it's worth it. Or, you forget it, it's that special sort of pain. But I know. I just couldn't go through with it. <sighs> how about we, uh... How about we go out and celebrate, eh? Hey? What, whatever's in the fridge will do. <laughs> oh, God. It's old Mother Hubbard time in here. <laughs> yeah, I, I didn't manage to get to the supermarket. Sorry. No, nor did I. Dear, we can't even manage to feed ourselves properly, let alone... Oh, Fran, <laughs> look, look, I, I, I know this has come out of the blue, and I, we never thought we'd be discussing anything so... Cute, well, we did discuss it once, Abe, remember? And I said I wasn't ready. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, well, nature's just pushing us into it then, isn't it? Well, actually, it, it, it's really quite exciting. <laughs> once, once you've got over the shock of it, it, it's another person. A tiny living replica of both of us. Oh, we've created another life, Fran. Abe, I'm sorry, but... I don't want to keep it. What? Don't answer that. It might be Joy. Who? The woman from upstairs. You've met her? Yeah, she pops in sometimes. She's terribly lonely. Joy! Hi, how are you? Oh, yes, clinging on as always. Never complain, that's the trick in life, eh? Uh, yeah. You must be able. Uh, yeah, yeah. Nice to meet you. I was watching for you. Well, we were just going out, actually. How lovely. Celebrating. Well, um, would you like to come in for a moment? Fran, we're going out, aren't we? It's all right. I won't spoil your evening, but I wanted to ask you both a favour. I wouldn't impose, but I have no one else, you see. If you just come up to my little eerie in the sky, it won't take long, I promise. Come in. Come in, don't be timid. Sorry it's so dark, but some of my things don't agree with bright light. L let me get another candle. Oh, wow. Joy, I had no idea. When you said you were well-traveled, I thought you meant a few cruises. Look, look at this, Abe. Looks like, is it a Burmese war handling? Oh, something's caught in my hair. But what the... It's only horse hair. <laughs> Nothing more sinister. <laughs> Navajo spirit catcher. Very old. 
You'll think I'm silly, but it really works. Well, gives me comfort to know evil spirits can't touch me. The real thing, not tourist rubbish. And this must be what? Some sort of fertility statue. Bolivian, is it, Joy? Colombian, actually, but well done. You're very knowledgeable. Well, her dad used to be an anthropologist. Years ago. So I can recognise the old shrunken head. Whilst my friends were playing with Barbie dolls, I was messing about on Chilean mouth whistles. Mm -hmm. But his collection is nothing compared with yours. This is amazing, Joy. I'm a bit of a magpie, aren't I? My husband used to laugh at me. How will we get that home? But he never tried to stop me. He was such a gem, a dear, dear man. Mm -hmm. I'm nothing without him. Oh, oh, this rug, Abe. It's just... Would you like it? Oh, no, no, no. No, I didn't mean... I was just saying... I'll have no use for it soon. I've no one to leave my collection to when I die. Yes, well, don't go giving your things away just yet. Uh, but I have a condition. My heart. See this casket? It's beautiful. Is it Mother of Pearl? It's what's inside that matters. It's a Mayan acolytista. Do you know what that is, Fran? No. It's more precious than everything else in the room put together. A form of crystal. The most beautiful creation. The ancients believed it contained otherworldly powers. Mm. But it comes with a little prayer inside the casket. An incantation, really. I know it's a lot to ask, but it would give me such peace if you could hold the crystal and chant the prayer over my body when I'm gone. As I say, I, I'm no one else. What, when you're, um, you want us to... When I'm dead, which won't be long now, I can tell. Would you do this for me? Open the casket? And say the prayer. Um, have you seen someone about this condition? Uh, one of my colleagues is an excellent vascular surgeon. We'd be happy to do it. We're honoured you've even asked us. Aren't we, Abe? Of course, yes. But uh, we, we really need to be off now. Of course. Your celebration awaits. Thank you so much. <laughs> Blimey. <laughs> oh, she's just mother. <laughs> you think she's got Uncle Fester hidden in that chest? Oh, oh, stop it. She's just a collector. She's mad as a box of frogs. <laughs> well, you're very convincing about that casket business. Well, she hasn't got anyone else. And say no to the scary masks. And if she tries to offload those statues with great willies, <laughs> run. <laughs> Look, I would like to celebrate somehow. I was hoping you'd support me. If I were your patient... Yeah, but this is different, Fran. No, but... Well, it's all right for you. You don't actually have to experience it. What? Give birth? Well, I wish I could. It must be amazing. To suffer that agony. I don't understand. What, what good reason could you have for something so desperate? I can't explain. Well, look, will you just think about it for a while? Don't do anything rash. Fine. Because what you're suggesting is permanent, Fran. Not something to decide on a whim. Well, maybe that's what it is then. It makes everything between you and me permanent. It would be forever. Yeah, well, I thought we were forever. I thought we were forever too. Why did I want to hurt him? He was never going to understand about the pain. This is the man who carried on playing rugby with a dislocated shoulder to win the university league. But then he's right. I am being stupid. And the more I think about it, the worse it gets. Oh, hi, Dad. There was an x -ray. Yes, absolutely. Uh, everything all right with you? Oh, yeah, right. I'll be over as normal this weekend, don't worry. You fancy lasagna again? <laughs> So, um, Abe gave me the impression that you were, um, that, that you might appreciate a chat, that you had something on your mind. No, I'm fine. Abe's just... No, don't worry, Dad. So, everything all right between you two? Yes, of course. Because 
He's a, a lovely man, you know. Your mother would have loved him. Yes, I know. Look, I'm, I'm really sorry, Dad, but I'm running late and I've lost my ruddy door keys again. I'll call you this evening after work, OK? Of course. You get off. Yes. Uh, and, and have you looked in the bowl on the hall table? That's oh. where they were the last time you oh. lost them. Oh, oh yes. <laughs> Thanks. Oh, well, <laughs> have a nice day, as they say. You too. Sensible shoes. Oh, joy. You're like me. Practical footwear. You get to see more of the world in sensible shoes. Well, you know, high heels and these rickety stairs, it's asking for trouble. Absolutely. Take no risks. Not in your condition. Uh, sorry, Joy? Has Abe been saying something? No. But I have a sense for these things. A woman has a certain glow. A light in the eyes. But don't expect Abel to understand your fears, my dear. Men have a poor imagination. What fears? I'm a little afraid myself today. Oh? Why? Oh, of old age. Being alone, you know. But don't worry about me. You've so much to think about. But I wanted to say, Fran, dear, promise me you won't rush into things. The chances are you won't need to make any rash decisions. Sorry? Well, I'd, I'd better be off to work. Yes. Yes, go on, you're running late. But pop in later, if you can. We've so much to talk about. Fran, I've been on a hunt. Come back with a lovely great mammoth. Well, the supermarket meal deal. I'm cooking. Fran? Fran? Hey! Come here! Fran? Well, what's happened? Where are you? Come quickly. Are you all right? Oh, thank God you're home. I didn't know what to do. What's wrong? When I got back from work, I popped up and the door was open and I went in. And she was lying on her bed and... Oh, bloody hell, I can't see a damn thing. Is this all the light there, isn't it? It's in here. Mind that tusk. Right. Well, maybe she's just... No. Let me check. She's dead, Abe. Yes, afraid so. No pops. The poor woman. So she, she was right... What was it, her heart, like she said? Oh, I can't tell. I didn't want to leave her on her own. Well, what time did you get her? About three o'clock. I've just been sitting with her. Well, on your own, in the dark? Well, weren't you... I mean, I'd have been scared witless in here with all these mask things and whatever. I did get a bit freaked at first, but then a funny thing happened. What? No, it, it doesn't matter. It's probably just my imagination with the shock of it all. No, what? I don't know, I just had this funny feeling. I was looking at that casket thing she asked us about, and when I peeped inside, I shut it straight away, but... Oh, and this is awful, because poor Joy is... But I just felt this funny, well, wonderful feeling, really, like I was suddenly alive. It sounds stupid now, but it was like... like a bright light was suddenly turned on inside me. Look, look, I'll, I'll call the coroner. You get off downstairs. You look done in. Abe, we made that promise, remember? You know, the casket. <laughs> yeah, well, it doesn't really matter now, does it? Of course it does. It was her dying wish. She asked me twice since, and I promised. We have to honour it. It's the least we can do. She might have been in terrible agony, like, like Mum was when she died. Poor woman... <laughs> Dying all on the road, how terrifying! <laughs> all right, all right. Come on, let's be quick. Eh? Where is this casket thing? It's exquisite inside. Look, this is the crystal. See what I mean about the way it sort of lights you up somehow. No wonder she loved it so much. Oh, wow. It is pretty dazzling, actually. You're right. You hold it, and I'll... 
It's a funny sort of prayer. It isn't Sanskrit, but it's some sort of ancient... Yeah, well, let's be quick about it, eh, Penny? Anza va coitil. Orino bada o coco. Anza va coitil. Anca va mankil. Orina bada o coco. Anilia. Right, well. Thanks. Good. Eh? It's okay. Dead bodies do that. It's just the lungs expelling the last. Although that should have happened hours ago. It is. It's coming oh, from. It can't be her. No. You said she was. Yes, she was. Hey, hey. Her eyelids. Oh, there's a pulse. Joy. Did did she say water? Yeah, yes. There's water here. Here, just sit. <sighs> Thank you. Joy, we thought you were... It's happened. What? What happened? Sorry. I didn't want to frighten you. What medication have you been taking? I knew you'd do it. You didn't let me down. Yeah, right. Well, listen, we need to get you to the hospital. No. Whatever happened here isn't... Well, you're clearly not well. You need to get checked out. I'm fine. Yes, I know. I died, Abel. You're right. But with this crystal and a little prayer, you brought me back to life. <laughs> hey, shut up. Fair say. No, it's all right. He's a doctor. They only accept science. It's a bloody good party trick. It's not a trick. It's the crystal. Look at it. The colours. And the way it shines. It holds the secret to eternal life. It is exquisite joy. But it can't really... It have... seduced me. Mesmerized me. It was like being in love. I think we should leave this thing alone and take you to see someone. No, we can't. There's something we must do straight away. You see, it has powers over us both. My husband and me. That's what I'm confessing to you. That's why I still need your help. Hey, it's okay. I had to wait until we were both dead for it to work. And I had to die of natural causes, so it was a long, horrible wait. And now I've got to be. I must be with my husband. Joy, is he in here? He's not in the... Uh... In the flat somewhere. No, my dear, I wish he was. I've wished he was with me every day since he was buried. Oh. He's in St. John's Churchyard. Please take me to him. Yeah, we, we could perhaps take you tomorrow. No, please. It's got to be now. We have to go now. Oh, don't you see? Now. Sit. There you are. Thank you. Thank you. But let's be quick. Right. Listen, this is the plan. We'll take her to the grave to placate her, calm her down, and then we'll pass her on to the psychiatric unit. And there's something really wrong with her, Fran. That's way beyond my skill. She's been treating me like her own daughter. I can't just abandon her age. We're not. I've said we'll go via this grave for her. Are you allowed into graveyards at night? Shh. We should try to listen. This row, I think. It's halfway along. Oh, come, look. Here lies Jack Horton. My lovely husband. Died June 4th, 1985. I've waited so long. You've no idea how lonely it was waiting for him. But I'm here, Jack. At last. Yes, well, there you are, Joy. You see, there's, there's nothing to worry about. Okay, Jack's at peace now. So why don't we take you to see someone who can check you over? No. 
He's right under our feet. We must rescue him, and quickly. Now, come on, Julia. No. I can make it all right for us, if you just help to dig him out. Jack! We're here! Answer me, and we'll dig you out. We're here! Deep. Oh, you see? Listen! Now, come on now, Joy. You're just upsetting no, listen, yourself. please. Stop your noise and listen. Hear that? Louder, Jack, so they can hear. Abe, we have to do something. Snow spade in the car. Uh. It's faster. <laughs> We're coming. Be brave. Oh, my brave man. How much deeper? We can't be much further. <laughs> oh, dear God. Hey, well, we're done. We're almost next to him. That's it. Hurry. Hurry. Right. Right, okay, look. I'm, I'm going to break in. <laughs> yeah, I'm through. I just need to... Oh, don't, don't look. Don't come down here. It's, the Frank, stay away. Why? He's... Putrefication. Rotting flesh. Oh, Jack, my love, get him out. We can't. You can't leave him. He's alive. You brought him back to life. Dave, you have to do it. Oh, dear God. Kill <laughs> What have you done to me? Jack, you must be brave, my love. Oh, God, I can't bear it. Joy. We can be together again. It'll be for always, my love, I promise. The pain is only temporary. I've got terrible pain, too, here in my chest. But bear it, my darling. It's not for long. This can't be happening. He died in 1985. Hey, what have we done? We'll be restored soon. No more decay. Jack, restored to your old glory. Even better than before. Just one last stage. Abel, we need to hurry. It's a long journey. What? Oh, no. No, no, no more. I know where we need to go. Uh, Come on, Abel. Let's get into the car. Uh, uh, I'll take you both, both to the hospital, but that's it. Yeah, he is right, Joy. Come on, then. Come on. Help him to the car. Uh, oh, God. You need to take the next left. I said where we're going. No, we haven't got much time. Well, that's where we're going. No, I was hoping you wouldn't do this. You're forcing my hand. I'm so sorry, Fran, but I have to do this. See? Look. What is it? It's a little figure. See? A replica of... Me? It's me? Yes. I tried to make it as beautiful as the original. And as she stroked the doll's face, I could feel her fingertips brushing my cheek just gently. And she ran her fingers along the spine of the doll to my shoulders, cupping her hand around my neck. Abe, just do as she says. No, we agreed what to do, Fran. No, please, Abe. What she does to the doll, I can feel it. She can feel me squeeze her <laughs> hand, and now her neck. <laughs> She's hurting me. So please don't. Right. I don't want to hurt you. You're such a kind, loving couple, but I can't let Jack suffer like this, can I? You understand about pain, don't you, Francis? And you can't overpower me. Not whilst I'm gripping its head. Give it to me. No, no, don't. She, look, she could just rip the head off. Okay. But... Let's just do whatever. 
I'm not asking much, am I? Just to take us to our destination. All right. But that's all. Got your mobile? No. Mind in my jacket, see if you can reach her. No, no. She's still clutching that doll thing. I can feel her hands around my neck. What are you two muttering about? Just wondering if we ought to get some more help for you. We need to get one last ingredient for the renewal. The professor has it. He'll help us. He knows how to do the ritual. Where's my little boy? Where's our son? Do you remember the professor? He betrayed us. You must remember that. I might. Some of it's... It's a blur. Of course. Don't try to remember anything, my love. It was too... Dreadful. I remember a fire. We gathered round a huge fire with the village elders in the evenings. We were guests of honor, Francis, at the chieftain's funeral. It was a big event. Death for them is a time to celebrate, you know. They're not afraid of it. The chieftain said it was a gift. The acolytist of the crystal, before he passed away, he said, It is my pleasure to give it to you, my estimable friend. That's what he called us, estimable friends, because of the help we've given him negotiating with the British ambassador. We didn't steal it. I asked the chieftain's wife for the crystal. She refused to honor his gift. So I took it. She wouldn't even have noticed it was the professor he found out. He told the elders, and they got wild, shouted we'd robbed from a dead man, and they... Oh, you're right to forget, Jack. Tell me what they did. No, not the details, I can't. They left you for dead. I got you back home, but you died of your injuries. Not me, to Samuel. What did they do to our little boy? Take the next right. And, Abel, you're driving too slowly. More heel to the steel man. What did they do to him? Don't keep asking me to remember. But you see, Jackie, love, that's why I have to believe it, that physical pain is nothing. If a child can bear it, then so can we. We can bear anything. So... He's dead, too. I'm sorry. No, no, no. You see why I I couldn't bear to lose you both. When the professor gives us what we need, we'll be happy again after all these years. Will Samuel still be dead? Right here, please, Abel. And there's no need to wait at the red light. There's no one this late. Run, Frank! No! That... You fools! Ave, come back! No, come on! Oh, don't make me do it! She gripped the doll's little finger and twisted it back. <laughs> oh, Ava, please, come back! Come on, Frank! Bear it so we can get home! Oh, my God! God! That was only the pain of a broken finger... What if I do the pain of an amputated leg? No, no, please, please. Stop it, John. Stop it, please. Oh, God, I'm so sorry, Fran. I'm so sorry. I just thought... It's all right. Look, I'll do what you want as long as you don't do anything to her again, okay? I knew you'd be sensible. You're a lovely man, and you remind me of us, Jack and me, when we were your age, full of love and excitement. Come on, then. Get going. How much longer? We're nearly there. Turn down here, Abel. Next right. As you see, I've been going cross-country, avoiding the main centre. We need to pass through Miniton, but it'll be deserted at this time of night. 
Philip. She said medicine. I know. Joy, this professor, where were you when it all happened? Peru, my dear. Oh, no, Abe. This is the way to dance. We've come a strange way round. Up this road. That's it, Abel. You know the way now. Stop the car, Abe. I can't. She'll hurt you. Yes. Let's not invite accidents. She's with child, Jack. Isn't it wonderful? Oh, God, Fran, I wish you hadn't told her. I didn't. She hurt us somehow. I was so pleased when I found out, Jack, that she was expecting. I knew that would be helpful. Yes, well, you can't threaten us with that joy because... Because... Well, it wasn't part of our plans anyway. We don't care. Your man does. And I think you do now, <laughs> don't you? Just a little. <laughs> Here we are, Abel. Turn up this track. Come back, Abe. Why, Fran? All I want is restoration. I don't know. I don't know what you want. Your father's an expert in all this, isn't he? He'll know what to do. What is this renewal thing? It's a special chant. And we drink a sacred potion. I've most of the ingredients, but not the essential carillo bone, which your father has, Fran. He knows the chant, too. He's a very clever man. Yes. Yes, he is. Fran, your dad will know what to do. But what if she... Fran, he'll know what to do. Oh, Abel, stop it. I've got the head gripped in my hand, see? Sleeping deeply, probably. How lucky he can sleep untroubled. Fran, do you have a key? Get on with it. Uh, uh, he keeps one out under these pots. Dad. Dad. Fran, what is it? I'm sorry, Dad. I'm, I'm so sorry, but we need help. David, these people want something from you. Hello again, Professor Chambers. What the hell? Who would... I'm sure you remember. 1985, you were on an archaeological dig near the village of Moranches, an acolytista. Oh, oh no. And do you remember my husband? Yeah. God, what the help us? Please, man. They want you to perform some kind of renewal thing. The Papa Numba, the Rite of Restoration. I've got everything apart from Carillo bone. I'm sorry, really, so sorry, but I did warn you. I told you not to take the crystal. We need the ground bone. Please, I know you took some. I, I was worried it might get into the wrong hands. Professor, if you could just get it. I destroyed it all years ago. Just do what she says. I haven't got anything. And I wouldn't, I couldn't give it to you if I had. David, she's got a doll thing. She's going to cause Fran terrible pain. Please, Dad, help us. Tell us what to do. What they want is eternal life. They could never be killed. Think of the power that would give them. I don't want power. I just want my Jackie back as he was. When people get power, where would it end? I'll say young again, able-bodied, powerful. Come on, <laughs> Professor. Is there anything worse than watching your own child, the person you love most in the world? And she dug her nails into the doll's knees, knives into my kneecaps, and I crumpled onto the bed. I suddenly allowed myself into this nightmare. I accepted that we were here, and I'd left the frightened stay-at-home friend far behind. And I was facing it. Bearing it. Just get the damn stuff, David. Frank can't stand this. Yes, all right. I'll get it now. No, no, no. That's right. They can't be given eternal life. Frank, darling. You... Abel loves you, Francis. He'll do anything to protect you and his child. Frank, are you... Yes, yes, she's pregnant. It would be so terrible to lose a life before it's even begun. You wouldn't do it. You couldn't. Look. At us. We're desperate. If you won't help, then yes, I'll cause you to miscarry. Then she dug her nails into my belly. <laughs> deep, piercing, gouging. <laughs> no! <laughs> if I do want our baby more than anything, Stop. I do. Daddy! <laughs> 
<laughs> I'll get what you want. Uh, I have to go down to the cellar to find it. We'll stay here with your family, Professor, so don't do anything rash. Don't touch her, Joy. I'll get it. I'll do the ritual for you. I could still feel the grip of her fingers like a belt of steel round my abdomen. I kept very still. I wasn't afraid anymore, not for myself. But inside me, it burgeoned up suddenly, an angry surge, a need to, to destroy the danger, to protect. I'm sorry it's come to this, Joy. We used to be friends, didn't we? I suppose you had to do it. What other way was there for you? Maybe we should have been more helpful. She said nothing, but nodded. Her hands still firmly holding the doll bony fist round the head, the other round the belly. Well, after all you've been through, so awful. Must have been terrible to see your husband, and even worse, your child. How old was your son when they... Twelve. Oh, oh I'm sorry. They would really deeply affect you, I... I can really understand now. You can never understand. You see, Fran, you know nothing about pain. Real pain. The sort that is unbearable. But you must bear it. The sort that destroys you and yet never lets you go. The sort that grips every part of you, even your very soul, until you think you're dying every day. You'll never feel that sort of pain. I'll spare you that. Look, there's no need for any of us to be in pain. We've agreed that... There's nothing in your medical arsenal to kill the pain I'm talking about. The agony of seeing your child burned alive. No. God. I'm so sorry. So sorry. And she let me comfort her. My arm round her shoulder. And very gradually, I could feel that steel band round my belly, her knobbly fingers, go soft and gentle. It oh. means I can never bring him back. Huh? His child's body gone. <laughs> oh. You must be be so strong all these years without Jack. I'm so sorry. I'll make sure Daddy does everything he can to make things better for you. I promise. Joy. And the fingers around the doll's neck went loose too. So before she knew what I was doing, I snatched it. <laughs> Daddy, you got it. Well done, man. No. Give it. No, it's over, Joy. No. No, the ritual you said you'd make sure you did it for me. No, he's not an unkind man, Joy. He'll help you. Dad! It's over. I got the doll off her. Oh, that's good. But it's not over. The sort of stuff she's been collecting for years. And we can't leave her husband in that state. I've still got to do the ritual. You, you, they can't have eternal life, you said. You and Abe should leave now. Oh, are you joking? I'm not leaving you alone with them. Then keep out of the way. Right out of the way. Whatever happens, don't come near. Promise me. Jack, we're nearly there. Thank you, Francis, for making this happen. I knew all along you were a good-hearted girl. But he said... He knows what he's doing. I, I wish you'd go. We're staying. Keep well back then, near the door. Are you ready, Joy? Yes. Yes. Jack? Yes. Uh, face each other and stand in position here. With a proper number, you have to keep... The power strong within your own circle. Now, take a sip of this each. And he held the glass for Jack to sip, and then for Joy. And Dad's hands were shaking as he poured the rest of the potion into the base of the circle. Now, Lady Acolytista, here between you both. That's it. Right. Okokobada orino, koitilva ansa. 
Mantil the Coco Bada Arino. What are you doing? You're you're reversing it. Mantil the Anka. Coco Bada Arino. Jack, he's tricked us. No, stay, my love. Let it end. I'm so sorry, Joy, but it's for the best. Keep back, Frank. He's killing us. She lurched onto Dad, oh, no. gripped him in her arms, and dragged him into the circle. Oh, no. Stop. Stop playing your own life, too. Get off him. Stay back. It's dangerous. Life and death. You can choose which way to go. Choose life, Professor. Eternal life, come with us. Do something, Abe. Don't touch me, both of you. It'll kill you. Just go. Run. David, you don't have to do this. I do. Only I can finish it. Koitu Vanza, Mandu Vanga. Dad, please don't. It's all right. Let me finish. Okoko Valorino, Annelia. Jackie. Jackie. Hold my hand. Oh, Daddy. Daddy. It ends with me. Go. Keep us safe, Abe. Fran, darling. Live a good life. Be a good mother to my grandchildren. That's my eternal life. Oh, Daddy! Oh, Daddy! Oh, Daddy! Everything that happened afterwards, the flashbacks, the voices, the terrible guilt, it's all a blur. But I'm still here because, well, something really powerful must have kept me going. This life inside that I had to keep safe. Look, I'll just tell an estate agent to sell it, contents and everything. Yeah. Except his dad's home... My childhood home, all his things. We can't just... You can't go back there, Fran. No, I know, it'd be awful. But think how brave he was. There's photos. His precious things. Can't we just... <laughs> all right, all right. Well, I'll do it then. No, not on your own. I need to sort through... Look, Fran, I, I don't want you to... Look, I'm okay now, aren't I? Just... Keep looking forward a day at a time. Yeah? I really don't think you should go anywhere near that house. She couldn't help herself. She did come back. I knew she would. And I knew she'd take it. A crystal. My crystal, because the power is still mine. Her foot touched it lying just under the bed. It always mesmerized her, made her feel safe. She slipped it into her pocket, thought it would protect her baby, which of course it will, but not in the way she thinks. Everlasting life, Francis. Abe? Abe, let's go. There are other ways to achieve it, eternal life. And when I'm reborn... Well, she won't even guess. I have to be strong. I have to be fearless. I can do this. Just one last. Everlasting life, Francis. Fran was Sarah Smart, Abe, Jonathan Keeble, David, Robert Pickervance, Joy, Janice McKenzie, and Jack was James Quinn. The Dying Wish was written by Rosemary Kay and directed in Manchester by Pauline Harris.
Well, we swap horror for sci-fi in this slot next week as five misfits are pitted against an alien intelligence in the one-off drama Landfall. BBC Radio 4 Extra, the seventh dimension. Nighttime ghosts can be dismissed as an unseen animal or a misinterpreted shadow, but if they appear in the cold light of day, they are harder to explain away. It's the devil's playground in today's story of summer ghosts, as acclaimed actor Kenneth Cranham reads Swings. He wondered if he had the right to call it a day. They'd played five games and were halfway through the sixth, and nothing good could happen to him now. They were all steaming in Ron's new tacked-on conservatory with its hibiscus, balsams, and a gaudy one called a Congo cockatoo. They should have been in the garden, but a pleasant breeze had played havoc with the lolly, and even the chance cards had ended up in the gardenia bed. Howard was a wheelbarrow man, a trundled round the board with an uncanny ability to miss desirable properties, and, as usual, it bought into stations and utilities. A fella of habit, he was, what well, they all were, although their annual pub crawl was a shadow of its former self. Last year, starting from the Browns, the Lord Nelson in Old Kent Road, they'd fizzled out in Northumberland Avenue. Bloody Ian Glossop, a virtual stretcher case. That was age. He tilted his chair back and regarded the other players with fake bonhomie. Lunch had been the usual microwave nosh. As for drink, the various six-packs of lager were history. He was about a tenner down, win some, lose some. He needed a breath of fresh air. Howard declared himself a bankrupt. I might take a mosey around the, uh, the park. They all looked at him. Is that prudent? said Trevor. The park was either ten minutes further from the street than it used to be when he was living here, in the days when he and Ron were next-door neighbours, Diane and Sandra nattering over the wall, or he walked a lot slower. What's more, he'd be pushing Peter's pushchair or going at the speed of Lily's four-year-old legs. No excuses. It was a sixty-nine-year-old's puff, this one. He paused at the gate. He hadn't been back since. He loved this place once, bird spotting, courting, then the kids. No when to stay in jail, he muttered as he walked in, taking his mind off. He'd lost about fifteen quid, he reckoned, totting it all up. But now he was under the summer trees, rustling in the breeze. He strolled around the duck pond, remembering. Peter in the pushchair still, and Lily scampering about. It hadn't changed, not much, in four decades. He quite enjoyed living here. How many years was it before they moved to Harlow? Five, six? The ducks flapped and quacked, but there was no one with him to squeal and point. It brought them here every Sunday, while Diane did a bit for the Baptists. Life went so quickly, and now the kids were into their second marriages, and he was one of those oldies he'd never thought he'd become, all woolly coats and tender skin, except that it was summer and he was in shorts. A big mistake. Gnarled calves, varicose veins. He took a circuit up to the bowling green on the edge of the park. He remembered telling Lily... When she'd asked what lay behind the first row of houses, more houses. It makes everything between you and me permanent. It would be forever. 
Yeah, but I thought we were forever. I thought we were forever too. Why did I want to hurt him? He was never going to understand about the pain. This is the man who carried on playing rugby with a dislocated shoulder to win the university league. But then he's right. I am being stupid. And the more I think about it, the worse it gets. Oh, hi, Dad. Debbie's in next race. Yes, absolutely. Uh, everything all right with you? Oh, yeah, right. I'll be over as normal this weekend, don't worry. You fancy lasagna again? <laughs> Jolly good. Um, so, um, Abe gave me the impression that you were, um, that, that you might appreciate a chat, that you had something on your mind. No, I'm fine. Abe's just... No, don't worry, Dad. So, everything all right between you two? Yes, of course. Because... He's a, a lovely man, you know. Your mother would have loved him. Yes, I know. Look, I'm, I'm really sorry, Dad, but I'm running late and I've lost my ruddy door keys again. I'll call you this evening after work, OK? Of course. You get off. Yes. Uh, and, and have you looked in the bowl on the hall table? That's oh. where they were the last time you oh. lost them. Oh, oh yes. <laughs> Thanks. All parts of <laughs> Have a nice day, as they say. You too. Sensible shoes. Oh, joy. You're like me. Practical footwear. You get to see more of the world in sensible shoes. Well, you know, high heels and these rickety stairs, it's asking for trouble. Absolutely. Take no risks. Not in your condition. Uh, sorry, Joy? Has Abe been saying something? No. But I have a sense for these things. A woman has a certain glow. A light in the eyes. But don't expect Abel to understand your fears, my dear. Men have a poor imagination. What fears? I'm a little afraid myself today. Oh? Why? Oh, of old age. Being alone, you know. But don't worry about me. You've so much to think about. But I wanted to say, Fran, dear, promise me you won't rush into things. The chances are you won't need to make any rash decisions. Sorry? Well, I'd, I'd better be off to work. Yes. Yes, go on, you're running late. But pop in later, if you can. We've so much to talk about. Fran! for a hinge and bracket special made for their 21st anniversary together and not heard in 21 years. From the Regent's Park Open Air Theatre in London, an hour with hinge and brackets is coming up at 7 o'clock. Enter the seventh dimension. BBC Radio 4 Extra. Uh, hello, Toby Haydock here. The Thinking Woman's oversight. Tonight, be careful what you agree to, even if it's the last thing someone ever asks of you. Our anthology series, All the Dark Corners, concludes as the summer ghosts shedding light on a different kind of haunting. It's the seventh dimension. Keeping me here's the best thing all round, really. And now the third and final part of our anthology, All the Dark Corners. But if it's all the corners, shouldn't there be at least four of them? Otherwise it's a very oddly shaped room or, or thing. Or Actually, shouldn't it be all of the dark? Never mind, never mind. There's no joy coming up for our heroes when they grant an old lady's dying wish. Dad said the other day, if you can only free yourself from the fear of death, then you can really start to live. But is it death, or is it... For me, I think it's dying. No, it's not even that. It's, it's being in agonizing pain. That's it. That's why I never go horse riding, or skiing, or even walking near cliffs. The possibility of agonizing pain is everywhere. I don't even use escalators. Suppose I tripped and tumbled all the way to the bottom, the agony of it. I don't tell anyone. It's too stupid. Childish. I'm ashamed. But that's how I know I can't do it. 
Friends say it's the most terrible pain ever, and then they say, oh, it's worth it. Or, you forget it, it's that special sort of pain. But I know. I just couldn't go through with it. How about we, uh... How about we go out and celebrate, eh? Well, what, whatever's in the fridge will do. <laughs> oh, God. It's old Mother Hubbard time in here. <laughs> yeah, I, I didn't manage to get to the supermarket. Sorry. No, nor did I. Dear, we can't even manage to feed ourselves properly, let alone... Oh, Fran, <laughs> look, look, I, I, I know this has come out of the blue, and I, we never thought we'd be discussing anything so... Cute, well, we did discuss it once, Abe, remember? And I said I wasn't ready. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, well, nature's just pushing us into it then, isn't it? Well, actually, it, it, it's really quite exciting. <laughs> once, once you've got over the shock of it, it, it's another person. A tiny living replica of both of us. Oh, we've created another life, Fran. Abe, I'm sorry, but... I don't want to keep it. What? Don't answer that. It might be Joy. Who? Oh. The woman from upstairs. You've met her? Yeah, she pops in sometimes. She's terribly lonely. Joy! Hi, how are you? Oh, yes, clinging on, as always. Never complain, that's the trick in life, eh? Uh, yeah. You must be able. Uh, yeah, yeah. Nice to meet you. I was watching for you. Well, we were just going out, actually. How oh, lovely. Celebrating. Well, um, would you like to come in for a moment? Fran, we're going out, aren't we? Uh, it's all right. I won't spoil your evening, but I wanted to ask you both a favour. I wouldn't impose, but I've no one else, you see. If you just come up to my little eerie in the sky, it won't take long, I promise. Come in. Come in, don't be timid. Sorry it's so dark, but some of my things don't agree with bright light. L let me get another candle. Oh, wow. Joy, I had no idea. When you said you were well-travelled, I thought you meant a few cruises. Look, look at this, Abe. Mm -hmm. Looks like, is it a Burmese war handling? Oh, it's, 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 something's caught in my hair. But what the... oh, it's only horse hair. <laughs> Nothing more sinister. <laughs> Navajo spirit catcher. Very old. Mm. You'll think I'm silly, but it really works. Well... Gives me comfort to know evil spirits can't touch me. The real thing, not tourist rubbish. And this must be what? Some sort of fertility statue. Bolivian, is it, Joy? Colombian, actually, but well done. You're very knowledgeable. Well, her dad used to be an anthropologist. Years ago. So I can recognise the old shrunken head. Whilst my friends were playing with Barbie dolls, I was messing about on Chilean mouth whistles. Mm -hmm. But his collection is nothing compared with yours. This is amazing, Joy. I'm a bit of a magpie, aren't I? My husband used to laugh at me. How will we get that home? But he never tried to stop me. He was such a gem, a dear, dear man. Mm -hmm. I'm nothing without him. Oh, oh, this rug, Abe. It's just... Would you like... I've been on a hunt! Come back with a lovely great mammoth. Well, the supermarket meal deal. I'm cooking. Fran? Fran? Hey! Teddy's not here! Fran? Well, what's happened? Where are you? Come quickly. Are you alright? Oh, thank God you're home. I didn't know what to do. What's wrong? When I got back from work. I popped up and the door was open and I went in. And she was lying on her bed in... Oh, bloody hell, I can't see a damn thing. Is, is this all the light there is in here? It's in here. Mind that tusk. Right. Well, maybe she's just... Let me check. She's dead, Abe. Yes, afraid so. No pops. The poor woman. So she, she was right... What was it, her heart, like she said? Oh, I can't tell. 
I didn't want to leave her on her own. And what time did you get here? About three o'clock. I've just been sitting with her. What, on your own in the dark? Weren't you... I mean, I'd have been scared witless in here with all these mask things and whatever. I did get a bit freaked at first, but then a funny thing happened. What? No, it, it doesn't matter. It's probably just my imagination with the shock of it all. No, what? I don't know. I just had this funny feeling. I was looking at that casket thing she asked us about, and when I peeped inside, I shut it straight away, but... Oh, and this is awful, because poor Joy is... But I just felt this funny, well, wonderful feeling, really, like I was suddenly alive. It sounds stupid now, but it was like... like a bright light was suddenly turned on inside me. Look, look, I, I'll call the coroner. You get off downstairs. You look done in. Abe, we made that promise, remember? You know, the casket. <laughs> yeah, well, it doesn't really matter now, does it? Of course it does. It was her dying wish. She asked me twice since, and I promised. We have to honour it. It's the least we can do. She might have been in terrible agony, like, like Mum was when she died. Poor woman. <laughs> Dying all on the road, how terrible! <laughs> all right, all right. Come on, let's be quick. Eh? Where is this casket thing? It's exquisite inside. Look, this is the crystal. See what I mean about the way it sort of lights you up somehow. No wonder she loved it so much. Oh, wow. It is pretty dazzling, actually. You're right. Thank you, Tom. No, no, no. No, I didn't mean... I was just saying... I'll have no use for it soon. I've no one to leave my collection to when I die. Yes, well, don't go giving your things away just yet. Uh, but I have a condition. My heart. See this casket? It's beautiful. Is it Mother of Pearl? It's what's inside that matters. It's a Mayan acolytista. Do you know what that is, Fran? No. It's more precious than everything else in the room put together. A form of crystal. The most beautiful creation. The ancients believed it contained otherworldly powers. Mm. But it comes with a little prayer inside the casket. An incantation, really. I know it's a lot to ask. But it would give me such peace if you could hold the crystal and chant the prayer over my body when I'm gone. As I say, I, I'm no one else. What, when, when you're, um, you want us to... When I'm dead, which won't be long now, I can tell. Would you do this for me? Open the casket and say the prayer? Um, have you seen someone about this condition? Uh, one of my colleagues is an excellent vascular surgeon. We'd be happy to do it. We're honoured you've even asked us. Aren't we, Abe? Of course, yes. But uh, we, we really need to be off now. Of course. Your celebration awaits. Thank you so much. <laughs> Blimey. <laughs> well, she's just mother. <laughs> you think she's got Uncle Fester hidden in that oh, chest? Oh, stop it. She's just a collector. She's mad as a box of frogs. <laughs> but you're very convincing about that casket business. Well, she hasn't got anyone else. And say no to the scary masks. And if she tries to offload those statues with great willies, <laughs> run. <laughs> Look, I would like to celebrate somehow. I was hoping you'd support me. If I were your patient... Yeah, but this is different, Fran. No, but... Well, it's all right for you. You don't actually have to experience it. What? Give birth? Well, I wish I could. It must be amazing. To suffer that agony. I don't understand. What, what good reason could you have for something so desperate? I can't explain. Well, look, will you just think about it for a while? Don't do anything rash. Fine. Because what you're suggesting is permanent, Fran. Not something to decide on a whim. Well, maybe that's what it is then. <laughs>